any technology. Yeah, it's definitely the uh, the gaps in the story that show Destiny to be well, <laughs> just pathetic, really. Because they're willing to, you know, as yeah. you've just said, like with Star Trek, say, you know, oh, we can we can do this because they have an equal system and we want to create an equal system. And you know, obviously, without the technology of replicators, it's simply well, quite literally, mag- magical thinking. So. <laughs> Well, Spearman said we can always build machines. Mm. I was like, what? You can build machines? <laughs> I didn't know you were useful after all. I thought you were just some little princess who liked to be worshipped. Yeah. I-, I just try to imagine her trying to invent a, um, a replicator. It's going to be something made with <laughs> little, uh, bit, little bits of woods. Uh, uh, Little bits of wood and elastic bands, I think. You know, just some kind of, you know, if it goes around, there's a hamster wheel connected and a, uh, it's connected to a clock, which makes it run backwards. It's a time machine, you know, and it's just completely bizarre. I just... Yeah, it's always funny. It's, it's always funny to me when they go, we can do this and that. And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> you dropped out of high school and you think that... A reptilian god told you this and this and that about the world. You, you can't do shit. Sorry. Yeah. I always find that funny. But I guess it's cool. Go on. Anyway, like blissfully unaware. <laughs> yeah. I always found that funny the way they um, like have this idea of reptilian gods, which they're basically, you know, obviously ripped off from David Icke and uh, Sitchin and uh, various other like uh, people who've talked about this kind of topic. And there's like nothing of real value in it, no proof or evidence, but they claim to be like very rational people. You know, it's Mm. really, I mean, obviously the cult mentality, you know. Dumb thing ever. Yeah. And, you know, I've looked a bit into uh, the work of uh, Zachariah Sitchin. And. Mm He was, well, he still is considered to be, even though he's, he died uh, a couple of years ago. But even so, he's seen to be by, you know, other people within, um, you know, who study ancient history, uh, archaeology, and other, like, topics which may relate, to be basically, um, well, <laughs> next thing to a quack, basically. And yet, a lot of these New Age groups... They're all talking about reptilians and they're saying, well, the proof is in this book or the proof is from this person, that person. You know, it's really, really uh, stupid in the end. You know what's the fun thing? Reptilians, uh, like reptiles as creatures, they freeze into position Mm. when it's getting cold. That would be a stupid shape to take for any kind of thing trying to, I don't know, be gods on Earth or whatever. But yeah. it freezes into position as soon as something freezes. Like when it's colder than, I don't know, I think it was 10 degrees roughly. Mm. 10, 15 degrees where it's getting really cold. They just can't move. That's a dumb shape to pick from all the shapes that there are. It is. In fact, uh, you'd expect them to be, I don't know, um, perhaps some kind of mammal, wouldn't you? Or something. <laughs> Maybe there's a, a robot. Yeah, that, that's far better having you a can robot. You always see it science fiction that way. Mm. Also, like when when cults like that or Destiny in that case, they make something up. You can tell science fiction by them picking humanoid shapes for aliens because it's it's easier to project into for the human audience. That's true. I suppose if um, the history of sci-fi had been slightly different. Uh, Bernard Pullman would be saying that, um, I don't know, the Daleks are trying to take over, or something equally as bizarre, <laughs> you know? Yeah, these are the yeah. true aliens, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, they never talk about crystal beings, like in that one Star Trek thing. Mm. The crystal alien thing that invaded, I was like, wow, that's cool, and it doesn't have arms and legs and just a weird fish face or something. Mm. No one's ever invaded by that. It's too boring. Doesn't have a face. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I've noticed it's the same with um, the Galactic Federation of Light. A lot of New Age uh, kind of group, and uh, they talk about a lot yeah, of the they similar also things. Have the reptilian thing, right? Yeah, yeah, and they believe in good aliens and bad aliens, and 
apparently 2012 is still going to be the right time and <laughs> they're, they're like a bit more so pathetic uh, for some kind of shift they call it a vibrational shift like suddenly we're all going to wake might, up they, push, they, they, they might have to push 2012 back a year or two yeah. Or <laughs> yeah a few of them are already saying uh, no it won't be 2012 it'll be 2016 you know, and oh. <laughs> 2016 comes around, they'll say 2020, and then them and, Dest- and Destiny will be in agreement, but then they'll get pushed back as well. <laughs> so they're not going to win. <laughs> I know that much. I've seen this comic strip once with two Mayans, or however that's pronounced, mm. um, looking at this calendar thing, and he's going, well, we're running out of space here, it stops at 2012, and the other guy says... Whoa, someone's going to really freak out about that in a few thousand years. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it doesn't run out of space. It's just it runs through the in- entire cycle, and it starts over. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, I've heard it, that, too. Like it, it. It, 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 it doesn't really end. It just, the, the uh, what's it called, the long count Yeah. happens to have the zero mark uh, around uh, 2012. And uh, it's just... I bet they thought they'd still be around and could just make a new calendar when the time had come, you know. Right. (laughs) That's what I would think. Yeah, I I mean, I I find it as ridiculous as um, with Millennium. You know, there's plenty of people saying that, like, right, on the 31st of December, 1999, that will be the last day. And the day after, suddenly the world's going to fall apart. You know, and everything else. They said the same things that, you know, the 2012ers say now, more or less. Although many people had this Y2K thing going on as well. They thought, right, the nukes are going to go off instead. But (laughs) it it was still the same sort of, like, um, transparent logic. And it's all been, like, transposed now to 2012. And I think it's just going to be one of those things that's going to be with us for a while. You know, every couple of years... There's going to be a big, like, oh, it's going to happen now, you know, and <laughs> every time, just flop, basically, you know? I think that's the way it it's goes. It's like in Buffy, but it never happens. Well, mm. the, the thing for me is that sometimes, uh, like, uh, the things that they get obsessed about, yeah, um, they're... It's not to say that everything they say is not true. There is some of the credibility to some of the things that they, they say. I mean, the, the economy is bad. Um, it, it could potentially fall apart. But the one thing that I, that I see that they do with uh, these cults like uh, Destiny, uh, even to some extent like Zeitgeist mm. and some of these, like, these other groups, they're all hedging their bets. But it, the thing is, they, they become, to me, they're like a divisive element where, you know, you could be looking for real solutions to, to, to the world's problems, but they're all off, so far off left field that, you know, it's like they're looking around in, you know, it's like they're past Pluto looking around for solutions yeah. um, that, that, are, that should be right there in front of their, you know, in front of their face. I mean, it, it you, you don't need to have solutions that involve aliens or free energy machines. You know, it, it, it just takes a little bit more effort to look at um, real solutions to, to the world's problems. And, and what I see is, like, all this, all this stuff just, I mean, I, I think, sometimes I think to myself, you know, what, how, do we, how do people on the other side, like, say, like, you know, someone's like a fundamentalist or, or a real hard line conservative, you know, they look at this entire thing and they're like, wow, what a bunch of freaking nuts, you know, okay. so it discredits any kind of legitimacy to, to any kind of um, movement which might have, uh, you know, a real relevant uh, issue or real things to talk about, you know, it just, it, it just, it just, uh, it just destroys it in my, in my view. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so the messages aren't always that bad sometimes they're just really badly executed though. I just if there's one thing I hate in this world then it's lazy people who do harvest work totally it agree it just pisses me off yeah I mean I, I've done some pretty um, you know diabolical um, things for like YouTube in the past and I thought to myself Doh! you know when you make a huge error 
and you look back, but a lot of these groups, they don't bother. They don't even have the ability to say, right, I made a mistake. 